the Grim Reader and the Grim Chronicles, the second to last one of this year, the penultimate Grim Chronicles for the past week, uh, week 51. Um, Christmas was fine, quiet but nice. And um, I'm dealing with one minor joint pain issue that isn't serious but is still <laughs> a thing. Apparently, when I went for a mini walk the other day on uneven pavement, I managed to um, put, put strain on my ligaments of my left knee. <laughs> and so, uh, they're so it's it's quite sore and yeah so but I've been seen by the doctor and we think that's what it is she she's very good about um, point poking and prodding in a in a way and and trying to you know tell me why it's probably not the meniscus which is what I was thinking but enough about that <laughs> let's move on to the reading shall we. So first off, I have to correct something that I had gotten all wrong last time regarding the Matron, uh, uh, the Patrick O'Brien Matron Aubrey series, Aubrey Matron. I had thought that I had stopped with Treason's Harbor, but no, the one I gave up on was The Far Side of the World, the more recent, the one after that, which I think is book 10, I want to say. So I realized that, and so I you know, switched out the books. And so now, and I di didn't start from the beginning because I did actually quite well, remember it quite well. And um, I can still sort of see why I got a, kind of had had enough of it, but I'm persevering with it. And I do think that it's interesting to me that the falling out of love with these characters, like it has to do with the fact that they're not swashbuckling young fellows anymore. They're, they're middle-aged, older, um, settled in their ways, perhaps even a little bit annoying, kind of what happens to older people, <laughs> such as myself. <laughs> so I should have more sympathy for them. Um, and I don't think, I, I, I'm still wondering about has the writing taken a nosedive? And I don't think so. I think this, this is, there is something to be said for this one. So a lot of it takes place on the boat, the ship, the surprise, and it has to do with whaling. So I think, and I'll, I'll, I never, I always think back to when I read about the whole series and the fact that at some point um, he had to sort of stand still in time. So instead of there being exciting battles and the, and the progression of the war moving forward, he kind of honed in on little um, episodes so that he could stretch out the series. And you kind of can tell that it's more like about the comings and goings of the people on the ship and less about, I don't know, I thought, you know, in retrospect, I thought the, when the sort of the war stuff was actually really exciting sometimes. And, and I'm sort of missing that here a little bit. There is drama and intrigue on the boat, on the ship, but, and it's quite well done, but it's still not quite the same. But anyway, I'm committed to at least listening this one through and then moving on either with that one or something else. We'll see. And so the next one that I'm still continuing on, uh, and I haven't made great progress with, but I'll figure out a way to maybe try and prioritize this one for next week, um, is The Leopard by De Lapedusa. And um, it's still really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, the pace is sort of not super slow, but it is taking its time. And the family has moved to a different estate and there was this great sentence where, I mean, I get, I am getting kind of whiffs of Buddenbrooks here because it's there's a, there's a sentence that is in here um, about something, that, some kind of offhand thing that he said, or it's, it seems offhand. I won't say it exactly for spoiler reasons. And then, and then there's a sentence about as a point from the narrator saying, this is the moment that kind of foreshadowed his fall almost the, the narrator says that and I think that's so interesting how uh and you could sort of see what he means but it, it and it's a good way of uh creating suspense as to what's to come and in and, and it's also interesting because we see this character this main guy the Salinas family uh patriarch um he's not 
he, he he's a little too full of himself you know we're not completely on his side so the fact but but he's also kind of well drawn and we see inside his head so when i'm not too upset by the fact that he might take a plunge because you know he kind of has it coming to him because he's a patriarch and he's very domineering and a lot of his ego is tied up in being who he is and so even that's kind of makes it uh not exactly suspenseful but you sort of looking forward as to what to how it will all play out in an interesting way and it's very well written and um yeah so i'm really enjoying it so just some general comments on that for now and then the big one which i have to talk to you guys a little bit about <laughs> how did i get myself into this so i was on i'm i'm on this discord now and then i pop into this discord where it has this sort of uh and it's and it's um run by one of one a booktuber and it has and it's discussions about books that are a little bit off the main radar in terms of booktube so you know there's discussions about pension there's discussions about uh arno schmidt the german guy sort of modernist 20th century modernists any and then actually quite a bit of discussion about uh, class classical authors or b books about the classics and nonfiction, even sort of transit sort of transitional works to do with physics and math, all kinds of stuff they talk about. And for some reason, one day I stumbled upon a novel that I looked up on Wikipedia, and it was called Miss Macintosh, My Darling, by a, a writer who I had never heard of, Margaret Young. And its dubious claim to fame is that it is one of the longest novels in written in 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 the Americas. Let's say you know we'll say that you know it's it's as long, if not longer, than Clarissa from Richardson. And it was written by Margaret Young, and I have started reading it because I found a copy. And I have to say, when I saw this, when I saw them bring this out to me, this is my copy of the book. I was like, well, that doesn't look so bad. That's not that's doable that's just one volume I mean, I it's a big volume it's heavy but of course the the pages are sort of you know are, are, are as thin as if this were a bible so you know pretty thin pages and we're talking 1198 pages novel and i'm glad it is i have this one and i'm gonna you know i have it out until at least july of next this coming year and being faculty, it's a faculty perk. I can probably keep it longer. And I did kind of want to share with you. I don't know, there's probably been other people since it's been taken out of the old fashioned card catalog, but this is the actual card catalog from when it was for this is from this is the 1965 edition. And so we see even, you know, it's a, 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 going along with it being one of the longest books ever written, it's also one of the most unread books ever published. And you sort of this kind of test is a testament to that fact. There's about six different um, dates here. One of them is a carol, so that's probably a, a grad student or a professor. And there's probably there maybe some other people, but about six people from 1965. And the last one was 1985. But there may have been a few people in between since 1985 because when she when they checked it out to me I, i'm not on here anywhere i'm in the computer so um but me thinks that this is not a hot 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 this this was not a hot book i mean in terms of being you know checked out of the library of my university and even at my university um because they've had space issues they've put a lot of the books that, like this one in a depository and so you kind of can check them out but they bring them to you so it's not in the stacks it's in the closed stacks so to speak it's just like a german library <laughs> it's kind of funny because that's how it is in the german university libraries or used to be at least um yeah so i started it and it was more like i'll see how it is i'll just want i just wanted to have a look at it because i found it in the library and i'm like whoa okay I'll take but you know what i really like it i really like it so I am pretty much committed and, and um, I'm not even t telling you much about the plot or about the writing today because it's a hun it's over a thousand pages long and I am a slow reader. So, and I promise to not overburden you with weekly updates of the book, but I will now and then include an update about how it's going. Uh, Margaret Young's a really interesting writer from 
And another reason sort of why I like it is that she was from Indiana. She was born in Indianapolis. She lived for a long time in in, in um, this town called New Harmony, which I have been to because I have an obsession with utopian <laughs> communities. If anyone knows about New Harmony, uh, she lived there. And I also lived in Indiana. I used to teach at a small, strange college. <laughs> Wabash College. Yeah. It's, it's claim to fame is that it's all all men. It's an all, uh, it's a non-military all-male college in Crawfordsville, Indiana. Oh gosh. Anyway, so I have this sort of affinity to to Indiana and to and and she herself when she talks about her writing and her life, she does kind of mythologize being a Midwesterner and writing about the Midwest. And it's almost as if because the Midwest in the sort of realm of the psyche is so what you see is what you get boring blah 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 that that kind of turns and becomes kind of the mythology of the midwest is that it's um so plain and boring and, and easily overlooked um yeah so i have started it i'm only a little ways in and my plan and we'll see how things go uh I've decided to think of it a little bit the way I thought of reading Anniversaries by Uwe Jonsson, another very long book, the book about Jezine Crespal and her life and her past, which I also loved. So I do like the long books, but they take me a long time to read. And that one was sort of good because it was in diary entries, so you could read it all along with the days, and that was actually a good idea for me. This one doesn't, it just has chapters, so I've committed to five pages a day, which Sounds like very, very, not very much, but this is dense prose. I'll talk more about the style in another, uh, but suffice to say that it's, it's, it's not that dense. I mean, it's not, to me, to my mind, it's, it's sort of like the easier passages of Ulysses. It's not even the denser parts of Ulysses and it's definitely not Finnegan's Wake. I mean, I can follow the meandering, surreal, hallucinogenic almost, um, labyrinths of her writing style. One thing I will say, and I want, and that's probably one of the main things that throws people off, is that her sentences are very long. She'll have sentences that run, that are like a paragraph long, because one of the sort of one of her stylistic devices that she uses is to to pile things on, to pile images on, uh, and, and it's almost like a tick. Like she can't just say. Uh, as like this and this, but she'll add other things. And and it reminds me a little bit of um, a novel that I'll have to talk about when I do my top 10, but it's not really part of the top 10. And that is, it's, it's, it's a strange analogy, but it did kind of bring to mind Trout Fishing in America by Richard Brodigan, which was even crazier in terms of the hallucinogenic. And there is kind of a drug, there is a drug, um, a drug, uh, Drugs are at the center of both, in a certain sense. Uh, the at least the some of the hallucinogenic parts of both novels. That's interesting. Anyway, so yeah, very preliminary stuff. We I, I won't even tell you about the plot yet, since you know many a week will go by when I can chat about this long, long novel that I have stumbled upon, and that I uh, and I, occasionally I'll put in the show notes. People on Twitter, there's apparently a podcast where someone is reading the book to you because it is hard to get a hold of. It's hard to find copies of. Dalky Archive did reissue a, a copy of it, but even that is pretty pricey. And it's also two volumes. And I'll have to check how how, how much that is. And if they if if maybe that's doable. But I was just glad to, you know, go get it from the library and you know, maybe I'll just try and keep it out as long as possible, since I don't think anyone's going to request it. <laughs> I don't think pe students are waiting to write their papers on this novel. <laughs> um, and even I might have to give up. We'll see. I mean, so far, so good. I know, um, you know, some people hate it. There's there's, there's a, a, a number of people who've, probably a lot of people have tried to read this and not succeeded. Um, I do think there's some some sort of you know, the, the, the part of the reasons why she's not a household name the way that some other maximalist novelists are uh, is is gender, you know, sexism. But it's also just a very strange novel and a very long novel. <laughs> and so, yeah, 
I mean, even Gaddis had to wait a while until people realized what a genius he was. So yeah, um, yeah, I'll just tell you that it was published in 1965 and it is her only novel. She's also written some really nice poems from her and I found one that I might share with you on Poetry Thursday if I feel so inclined. Um, and oh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia, it has all the different characters some of whom are connected to real people in her life sort of she's kind of taking them as a as a stand-in and then going off on her own journey with them so yeah i think that is it so i'm listening to far side of the world i'm reading the leopard and miss mcintosh and just for something completely different um and maybe it's terrible but uh, so occasionally I do like to d uh, dive into the or take dip into the self-help uh, pool and I found this book that is called The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion Freeing Yourself from Destructive Thoughts and Emotions so it's very self-helpy sounding and the first chapter is called Being Kind to Yourself which is something I still need to work on and what and you know kind of like figure out what that exactly means uh, it doesn't necessarily mean giving in to, you know, eating whatever you want or not working out or whatever. <laughs> um, but the part of the reason I bought this book is that the writer Christopher Germer, PhD, is what well, he had written uh, an article or was translated in in a German book about, uh, no, not book, a, a, a German magazine that I sometimes like to buy when I'm over there, kind of a new agey type place to, and it was dedicated to mindfulness and what that actually is. And he had been interviewed for the magazine. This is some years ago, actually. And I actually really liked the interview and I even sort of wrote out some of the quotes and then I realized, well, he's American, so I can find his stuff in English and that's what I did. He has a website and a book and I bought the book. So I haven't started this one yet, but um, I think what I'm going to have to do with my reading is um, first of all, not freak out that I'm not getting enough done. I have to be kind to myself <laughs> and then also structure it more like five, five pages of this one and then figure out how much of the others, how much of the leopard and even the Gurmer, and also like what times of day do I read what books. Yeah, so this is the penultimate um, Grim Chronicles of the year. I'm also kind of thinking about will I continue on with weekly updates. Um, I don't mind the weekly ones, but it looks like at least for one book that it will be taking me a long time. I mean, I could just not talk about that one, but then if there's a week where I don't read much else, What's the point of making a video? So maybe the Grim Chronicles won't be every week and I'll just up, I'll update you every other week or it'll be a little less. I mean, for this year, I did kind of, you know, completest and slightly obsessive person that I am. I did want to complete the 52 weeks without a break. I did 50, every week there was an update for this year and I may not do that next year. We'll see. And I think that's fine. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. What are you guys reading at the end of the year? It's such a strange time. And uh, we've been having weird weather, kind of warm, cold, kind of, it was really warm on Christmas. It was kind of strange. Uh, anyway, yeah, and uh, I have to wish you all a happy new year. So that's coming up on Friday. And then we'll be in 2022. And then I'll have to update you for this year next, uh, in the next year for one more time. But that's fine. Talk to you later. Hope you're all doing well. Please comment uh, on anything you'd like to, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.